Yes, yes, I know what you're thinking. Oshin, you are doing an unboxing for Batman The Long Halloween Part 2. Why are you wearing a Superman t-shirt? And the answer is, didn't know I was doing this video today. So, to start things off, I picked up The Long Halloween Part 1 whenever it came out originally. I wasn't going to pick it up because for me, the anime DC movies, I haven't really liked them. The first one I ever saw was The Killing Joke. I thought that was really bad, so I kind of left a bad taste in my mouth for all the DC animated stuff. Flashpoint wasn't really a big fan of. I liked Hush, but other than that, didn't really want to explore. Superman Red Zone, I watched that last year, didn't like that one either. So I was kind of like, yeah, you know what, I'm not really a good person for these, so I didn't bother watching them. But then, Long Halloween Part 1 came out, people were loving it, I picked it up, watched it, I loved it. Since then, I've watched um, Batman Gotham by Gaslight brilliant movie uh superman man of tomorrow really enjoyed that one death in the family i picked up uh, justice league versus fatal F fatal five i think it was called all really really good ones so i've actually really been looking forward to part two coming out it finally came out so i finally picked it up haven't actually watched it yet even though i'm doing the unboxing now i'm gonna do what i done for the last one do an unboxing and then a review of it at the end but i'm unboxing it now I'm not going to be able to watch it for another couple of days. Actually, when I'm done this, I'm going to go off and see Free Guy. Very excited for that. But let's get on with the unboxing anyways. But first things first, to put them together. When I saw that originally, when I saw the first one, I was like, that's pretty cool. And then they released the image for the cover of the second one. And I thought that was just so cool. I'm probably going to have to display them that way. Even the side of them, it's starting. Apparently, when I saw this originally for part one, I was like, what the hell is the side? But I saw someone put on Instagram... Since I think it was Superman Man of Tomorrow, it's going to eventually spell out DC Universe, I imagine. I saw DC and U, so I kind of put two and two together, but there's your spines, two of them together. Starting to spell, you see the C and you see the U. So um, again, I'm just assuming, yeah, maybe DC Universe movies, something like that. Who knows, but again, I have been very excited for part two. To go off the back of the first one, there you go, you got Joker, you've got... I don't know who that big guy is. I can't remember Catwoman, but on the back of this one, you've got the Scarecrow, Poison Ivy, Two Face, and the Mad Hatter. In the first one, he was not Two Face; he was Harvey Dent. So whatever happens is gonna happen in this one. And this one here is seventy-five. Is that shorter than the other one? Yeah, this this one here ten is ten minutes shorter than the first one. I'm going into this really not knowing anything about Long Halloween. As I was going through the first one, I was thinking, trying to predict who it is. By the end of it. I didn't know who it was. I still have no idea who it is. I'm glad nothing's been spoiled for me. I'm hoping nothing's going to get spoiled for me because it's going to be another four or five days before I actually get around to watching this. But to crack it open with anyway. So there you go. There's your front cover again. There's your spine. The other side is blank. And then you got your back. You can pause that there if you want to give it a read of anything. It's just it's just a Blu-ray anyways. Same cover. Front and the back is all the same. And memory is just a blue disc. I could be wrong, but I think it's the blue disc. Again, yeah, Batman The Long Halloween Part 2. I am, I'm very excited for it. As you can see behind me, I'm a fan of Batman. I love this one. I saw this one on the line this way. You got uh, Michael Keaton, Baffleck, and um, what's his name? Robert Patterson. There, I thought that was really cool. I printed that one out. Other stuff they're advertising. Batman in Cinemas 2022. Really hope that doesn't get pushed back. I'm really excited for that. Suicide Squad. That was an absolute blast. Games. I'm probably going to pick a boat with these. Got a PS5 now. So I probably will end up picking a boat. But Long Halloween Part 2. Very excited for it. Hopefully I can find the time at some point this week. So I can watch it. See my thoughts on this. See is it better than the second. Or better than the first one. Does it wrap up the story well? Really hope it does because honestly, I've heard nothing. No one is talking about this movie for the most part, and it came out over a week ago now. So I'm hoping it does not disappoint and it does finish off this two-parter really, really well. I've never seen the two-parter from the DC anime movie, so I don't know if it's very kind of front-loaded or back-ended. I don't know. Very excited to see how this one does wrap up. So let's move on with my actual thoughts on the movie. So it's been over two weeks since I actually done the unboxing. I finally actually sat down to watch it. Very struggled to find the time I to actually watch it. But finally sat, sat down to watch it. And now after watching it, this is not my favourite of the DC animated movies. But I think part one and part two together is now my favourite of the DC animated stories. I think the story in here, especially in part two, I found it to be extremely compelling. I was glued from start to finish. Now at some point towards the start of the movie it was very slow in the fact that it was like even the poison ivy stuff towards the start 
you're watching it, you're enjoying it, but it's just, it's a very slow burn towards the start. Of course, if you look at the poster, you got to see Two-Face, and you knew going into it, okay, we're going to see how Two-Face became who he was because we saw part one, he wasn't Two-Face. So seeing Two-Face in this movie, I think, is the best version of Two-Face I've ever seen. Now, I, like most people, I love the version of Two-Face in The Dark Knight, but I thought his storyline in this movie was extremely, extremely compelling. From start to finish, I was intrigued to see where his story was going to go. I hated to see his downward spiral as he was progressing into a darker version of himself. All of that I found so interesting, and I really, really loved this version of Two-Face. Seeing what he's able to do when he embraces the Two-Face element I really, really loved all that. Batman as well in this movie, I feel like he wasn't as good as he was in part one. In this one, he kind of takes a little bit of the back seat. In the first one, you watch him being a detective, going around, trying to solve everything. But in this one, you see him more reacting to things rather than him being on the front lines, trying to organize, still trying to figure stuff out. He was kind of there as it was being realized, so I didn't find him as interesting in this movie as I did in the first movie but one of my favorite things about this movie was that we got to see so much of Batman's rogues gallery we saw like people, people from Poison Ivy, Joker, Penguin we even got to see Calendar Man and the Mad Hatter all of this was great there was a big massive fight scene with all of his rogues gallery and it was really really great to see I'd love to see something like that in live action just with a shit ton of Batman villains because we've most we've seen I'd say with two, I know three, Batman and Robin, but who really wants to talk about Batman and Robin today? So I'd love to see in live action just a shit ton of Batman villain, villains fighting against Batman. Probably throw Catwoman in there to help him or even throw Robin or Nightwing. Throw someone in there to help Batman just as he fights 10 or 5 to 10 of his villains. I would really, really love to see that in an actual live action Batman movie. As well, the uh, Holiday Killer... In the first movie, I was saying I was really glad it wasn't actually Joker because it was kind of pointing to Joker and things. I was thinking, please have the villain be someone other than Joker. Now, after watching it, I'm happy to say I was shocked. I truly, truly did not believe who it was going to be. I was watching it and I was kind of thinking, okay, it's obviously going to be this person because they're on the poster of the Blu-ray. And as it progressed, it was kind of setting it up to be them. But then the big reveal at the end, I was honestly shocked. It's not someone I was going to believe it was B. And it was actually a pleasant surprise because I liked how the story progressed and how the story proved it was this person. And I just found it to be extremely, extremely air, um, uh, intriguing when it was actually realised who the main villain was actually going to be. The animation in this movie as well is just as good as the first movie because they would have done them together obviously. There were scenes in this movie that they had animation that looked very reminiscent of it. It was actually straight from a comic book and I really, really liked all of that. All as a whole though, The Long Halloween Part 2... I really enjoyed it. I think part one I enjoyed a lot more because I really enjoyed the mystery element of that and the detective element that Batman had to do. But this movie, it finished off this this um this part two part really really well. Really great, intriguing finale. Really enjoyed all of it. The action scenes were great. Catwoman was really really good in this movie. Again, Catwoman. I wouldn't say this is the best edition of Catwoman I've ever seen, but it's definitely one of the best because I really really enjoyed this one as well. The movie. The way the movie ends on Halloween night with Alfred, and not to spoil it, but a trick-or-treater, really loved that, really put a smile on my face towards the end of this movie. But if you haven't seen The Long Halloween Part 1 and Part 2, it's definitely one that you'd want to watch back-to-back. -back. It really does lend into the other one really, really well. It makes you, it's great for, I'd say it's a three-hour movie altogether, I'd say. It'd be a great three-hour to sit there and watch it all together. For me, it's been about... I'd say two months in between. So at first I kind of had to remember what was happening. Because it's been so long since I actually watched part one. But honestly you should definitely sit down and watch part one and part two. It is easily my favourite of the DC animated universe stories that they've been told so far. I've been exploring more over the past few months. I'm going to keep going into that rabbit hole and explore even more of the DC animated movies. So if you want to see future DC content from me. Click that subscribe button to come back and see more from me in the future. And as always thanks for watching.